it was here. Those events were taking place here. All of those big names, Kidd, Martel, Bellany, Blackbeard, they were all here in the Virgin Islands and operating here. And the one key sentence for me was a report that the British government made to the Lords of Trades and Plantations where they said that they were absolutely petrified that the Virgin Islands was going to turn into another Bahamas because the pirates that were operating up in the Bahamas were starting to come down here because there was no law and order here. So this, this kind of breakfast talk, I would imagine, is something that your tourist guests might be interested in hearing. Likewise, the sites and the different islands that you guys visit. Um, Norman Island right there, for example, a classic named after a pirate. You know, Captain Norman we know is executed for piracy by the greater cost of the Spanish Coast Guard. Norman Island's got a great history to it, um, primarily because of the two treasures uh, that were recovered from Norman Island. And again, this isn't fantasy, this is, this is fact. Uh, the first one involved a man called Owen Lloyd, who basically, a Spanish ship that was exiting um, to go to, uh, back to Spain, came through the Florida Straits, encountered a hurricane, and had to anchor and go into the Carolinas, which was obviously English territory. Now, there was an agreement made between the captain of the ship and the British governor that all of the treasure, the coins, the jewels, etc., would be taken off of the ship and put into the magazine, the powder storage magazine, a safe place on shore. Um, and whilst this was being done, one man, Owen Lloyd, just took the boat that he was on full of treasure and brought it down here. Now, we know that he stashed a lot of it on Norman Island um, because it created an international incident. The Spanish actually, uh, the Spanish court confronted the British court about it and it almost went to war. And so the British had to send a warship from Antigua up to Norman Island. And they found that the treasure had gone. The planters here on Tortola, including a man called Abraham Charwell, whose plantation you're on now, his great house and his works were just on this hillside here. They'd gone over, dug it up, and kept it for themselves. So the British war captain, he said, okay, I'll make a deal with you. If you give me what you've taken, I'll let you keep 10%, and we'll forget about what you've done. And we have the receipt of what each person gave and the 10% that they were given. This isn't fantasy, this is fact. Some years later, a man called Creaky from St. Thomas was fishing off a of Santa Monica rock, which are the divers amongst you, I'm sure you'll know of. And he noticed a storm coming in from St. Croix, so he basically put up his sail, he got out his oars, and he started coming for Norman Island as quickly as possible. He couldn't get into the bite, which is where he was going, so he put his boat in one of the caves. The story of the caves. We're not exactly sure what he took out of there. I've only ever seen one piece. Traditionally, within the Creaky family, the eldest daughter inherits this incredible chain that wraps around about three or four times of very heavy link Spanish gold. That's all that they kept um, from what he found. Uh, the story basically goes, and I'm taking this from a lady who's an ancestor of the man and, and has spoken to family members. He was in the cave, he noticed something in the top there. Um, he actually left the chest that the material was in in the cave, but he took what was in the chest. He took it back to St. Thomas, and a simple fisherman was basically one of the richest men on St. Thomas within the next few weeks. Um, he owns Creepy Alley, uh, the, the, the alley that the Mamas and Papas made a song about. Um, that's named after this man, Creepy, and there's a story, a plaque about the treasure there. Um, and they actually bought Norman Island. In fact, Val Creepy, uh, who the husband created, Billy Bones, was the last of the Creepies to be on the island. Um, and this is a very well-documented story. Now, these two treasures that were found on, on Norman Island, this isn't fantasy, this is fact. And again, something that maybe would make a good lunchtime conversation if you're anchored off of the Norman Island in the caves. Um, what's more remarkable is that this, this man found this uh, treasure in the early 1900s. Robert Louis Stevenson had bought out Treasure Island just around 20 years before in the 1880s. It's considered to be the first great adventure novel. Just to put that into perspective, um, Norman Island was to a certain extent the basis for that book. Louis Stevenson never came here, but his uncle did. His uncle was a very experienced mariner who'd come down to the West Indies a lot. So he would have taken descriptions from that, but primarily um, the references he got was from a book called Last of Christmas in the West Indies by a man called Charles Kingsley, which had been published about 10 years earlier. And he describes Norman Island and he describes Dead Man's Chest and the legend of Dead Man's Chest. And this is where Stevenson got it. But he wrote a book about a young boy finding a treasure trove of Spanish gold in a cave on a deserted Caribbean island. And literally 20 years later, that's exactly what Mr. Creepy did in the very same cave that Louis Stevenson had written about. Again, these are the kind of stories I think that tourists are interested in. And, and rather than being fantasy or, or something that people have made up, this is the fact, the reality of it. 
And certainly as far as historical sites on these islands are concerned, there's plenty. If your people want to go hiking, if they want to take a look at some of these sites, if they're interested in the history of them. On Norman Island, uh, there's at least two or three that I can think of. And in fact, in the bite there, I just recently came across a map in the Spanish archives from the 1820s that shows three or four houses in Norman Island on this western side. So again, what we'll do with that is we'll go into Norman Island, we'll send the drone up and we'll go over those areas that are shown on the map, we'll start to look for evidence of those places and then literally walk in. And these are the kind of sites that we're finding